Hello, my name is Patrick John Mills. I'm an artist and I've been painting for over 28 years. I wanted to share with you the making of this painting titled Her Red Dress. Here I have some tri-art gesso. I make, I'm pouring it into a large, clean uh, pail that I got from Canadian Tire. I have put in some cadmium yellow pigment, dry pigment, and I'm stirring it around and pre-mixing it. Here I am, I've already gessoed this 12 ounce cotton duck canvas twice before, and this is the third layer of paint or third layer of gesso that I'm adding. What I'm doing is you're noticing I'm going like wax on, wax off, paint the fence, but I'm going uh, vertical. I'm going straight up and down. And then I go cross, kind of like a, a plus sign. Like, so everything is left, right, left, right, horizontal, and then vertical movements. I'll show you vertical movements. And there's the vertical movements. And this is so that your foundational or primed canvas is all at rest. I'm spreading the paint left to right. And then my final layer or final movement of the brush, because this is a landscape painting, is from left to right. So the, the painting is all nice and calm on the, and all still. So it's not like all over the place and being crazy. Here, what I'm doing is I'm finding the center point of the painting with two, two strings, and then I go around and make a circle. I'm just building kind of a, a framework, and I wanted to share with you the, the geometry or the kind of the, the substructure of the painting. So here I'm doing kind of like an arc and another kind of arc. And this is kind of to give myself a, a paint by numbers kind of grid work. Here I have cadmium lemon yellow, which is an opaque pigment. And I've purposefully picked that and I've mixed it with a cadmium yellow medium. And I'm just kind of mixing it in. The reason why I'm putting a sub level is with a opaque is so that the underpainting will kind of shine through or have like um just have a depth that i really like by putting that opaque color in the spray bottle is a great way to kind of uh i use that and i just spray it on it allows me to when i go out painting on location or it it makes it so I don't overspill. I can really kind of um, control the amount of paint and thinner. The reason why it is 75% uh, turpentine is because the turpentine allows the, the paint to dilate, to, um, to thin out basically. But it evaporates so in terms of fat over lean and making the sub layers of the painting it will it won't get too oily and then when you're making the paint more workable and spreading it out it's not too oily and it's just a really good practice if you put too much oil or medium the, the pigments can't stabilize and hold it. And so when the painting will dry, the, the pigment will kind of settle down and then the oil or medium will, will rise to the top and, and create a, a yellow film. But when you use turpentine, that won't happen. It will, it'll evaporate and, and go like, won't mess with your paint. Here what I'm doing is cross hatching, but the middle part I've done all vertical, so it's all calm, the big yellow part. 
And here I'm filling out the edges of the painting. But again, I'm making these parts go left to right to have a nice movement and stillness. So I do that on both sides. And I'm just doing left to right, leaving the last part of that movement nice and clean. And just so your eye can be at rest. Not everything should be moving. Here what I've done is I put a lizard and crimson right there. And I've alternated it with turquoise, a lizard and crimson, turquoise, a lizard and crimson. Three and two. Kind of like a little mathematics there, I always... Then what I do is, if you've ever put turquoise and a lizard and crimson together, they create this just beautiful violet. They just pulsate, and it gives such a an amazing quality. Those two colors are just... They just communicate so beautifully together. Then I put them with the white. I don't overwork it. I just kind of almost one or one time at two times like I don't make it into mud but I take the paint and I go all the way to the edge you'll notice I'm taking the painting moving it into the middle but also here I'm taking the paint and going right to the left of the the edge of the canvas so that it it really expands the moving quite fast here here I'm putting in a cadmium red medium or light i'm not a hundred percent i think it's a, a light nice warm color and just spreading it around thinning it out a little bit making it not too too thick so i get a nice gliding feeling and just putting it all in making it breathe making the painting just start pushing it around and integrating the parts but i wanted the yellow the kind of like that big circle to dry for a while and so i'll leave that for a few days after i put on all this red and then i i come back to it here i've gotten a whole bunch i've got a nice clean palette and i've squeezed out about four or five large tubes of paint and i put in some medium and that's got about 20, same thing again, about 30% uh, alkyd medium, which gives a nice gloss and sheen with the turpentine. And the alkyd medium helps the paint dry quicker. And I'm just mixing it in so that it's, uh, it's just all those four or five different kind of reds are all in there. And I'll hold on to the, the, the consistency of the medium there that I've added, just to make it more workable. So I've waited a few days, let it sit. You'll see it's kind of gone a bit flat and everything's kind of moved in. But you can also see that I'm putting another layer on top, but a little bit it kind of bleeds through and it's not completely dry the underpainting and that gives i'm able to kind of lift it a little bit i just love paint isn't that gorgeous oh yummy <laughs> and I, I i share with you this so that you really are kind of bold and and you're just allow yourself to be completely free and have fun i think art should be really about just giving and giving a million kisses you don't count the, the amount of sweat when a when a person runs and you shouldn't count the how fast your heart beats when when you're making love so here we are now i've i'm adding another layer of a lizard crimson and that's a, a beautiful color and i also put that on the edges so I want it to, the edges in the middle to really connect more. But a lizard and crimson, and by adding that, it makes the, the bottom layer and the top layer really pulsate by having multiple layers of red. 
I don't overwork it, or I try not to. And alizarin crimson is a semi-transparent pigment, so it, it really kind of allows everything to work together. You'll also, oh, titanium white. I use titanium white because zinc gets quite stiff. I find it, though it's more transparent, zinc white, it has more a pearlescent kind of feel to it. I find the texture of it's really, uh, of titanium white, much looser. I've waited a few hours again for the, the side of the paintings to, uh, to dry. Not dry, but to settle, because here I'm using a black and a blue both at once. I don't overmix them and I allow all of it to kind of mix while I'm, I pull the underpainting a little bit and I let the black and the blue kind of to communicate and I kind of just have fun. I go through a lot of paint and but there I'm kind of pulling the underpainting up and putting it on here I'm just putting in a bit more detail with another palette knife to give it a little bit more structure and to kind of define edges of it but allow it to keep breathing. Here's the red just pulsating. It's just so gorgeous and you get the feeling of that yellow underpainting coming through in places and it just has this kind of energy or shine it gives like a, a light to it here I don't overwork it I'm really kind of uh, working the underpainting and the top painting and really getting that here's the white and now I scrape a little I'm trying to get some of that yellow to come through on the underpainting there it is and Bring a little bit of red so it's a painting, not a sticker. Anyways, those are some things. And I just wanted to say I'm so blessed and so happy. Tanya Kisslinger, you are the passion in my red. Please visit the Art Factory, liveloveartfactory.com. If you need anything, we're here to help you. Stay safe and be creative.